Here we are, day five in our Week of Creation Yoga series. Thanks so much for partaking so far. I hope it's blessed you, and I'm really excited to bring you this practice today. So this is the last yoga practice of the series, and the next two videos are gonna be meditation practices to help you give you a wider glimpse into the Abbey. The Abbey is um, who's sponsoring this series. We're an online community where we gather together, meet with Jesus on our yoga mats, and dig real deep into a piece of scripture to help us grow in greater intimacy and connection with God and with each other. So let me read to you our theme for this practice today. It comes from Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. This is day 5 of creation. And it says, God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living and moving thing with which the water teems according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. Let's jump in and do some yoga. Let's begin our practice lying on our mats with our feet on the floor and our knees knocking towards the center. And place your hands on your body somewhere so that you can feel your breath moving through your body. So on this fifth day of creation, oh, this is my favorite. On the fifth day of creation, all five senses are introduced isn't that wonderful? Now, all of a sudden, we have creation, witnessing creation. We have beings in the sea and beings in the sky that not just see and hear, but they smell and they taste and they feel things. They feel God's creation. They smell it. They taste it. There is life to witness life. And what I love about this day of creation is that it just, it's, it's like an exclamation mark on the progression of things, right? Everything has been building on itself up until now and will continue to build, right? Until God makes human beings and then God rests. But we have light, we have air, we have vegetation, and now we have beings that can thrive in that kind of environment. Right? If God had done this work of creation on day one, it wouldn't have survived. There's a, a logical progression. There's a step-by-stepness to this. And yet, how often in our lives do we want the final product now? We're so uh, frustrated and impatient with the step-by-step -step nature of things. And yet, not only is it for creation's well-being that there's this progression, it's for its survival. It's for our full benefit. It's full our. Th it's for our thriving. It's so that we can't. We can just. We can experience God by more than just knowing Him with our minds. We can actually smell and touch and taste and hear Him. How beautiful is that? John Philip Newell writes that our knowledge of God is not an external deposit of truth. Rather, it's an experience of God that comes to us in the use of our senses whether that be through the scriptures and the sacraments or through creation and one another. It's not a doctrinal knowledge, but belongs to some deeper part of us as human beings. It's like the way an infant comes to know its mother. What a beautiful picture. Oh God, like children held in the arms of a loving parent, May we come to know you not just by our heads, not just by hearing your word, but by knowing you through all of our senses. May we meet you in our touch. May we meet you in our taste. May we meet you in our smell. God, may we see creation as a full offering of heaven here on earth. Bless this practice. Speak to us in it. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 
Slowly draw your knees into your chest. And we'll begin our practice with some eagle crunches. So wrap your right leg around your left. Take your right arm, wrap it underneath your right. And then reach your left toe to the floor and your left fingertip to the floor. Stretch out your eagle. Take a breath in. And then exhale, curl your elbows to your knees around your spine. Do this four more times. Inhale, open up. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. I lost count, but I think we have one more. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl, untwist. Hug your knees in. Take a breath. <sighs> Let's do it on the other side. Cross your left over your right and your left arm under your right arm. Stretch it out. Make contact with the floor, breathe in. Exhale, curl it in. Four more times, stretch it out, draw it in. Open up, curl it in. Three more, open up, draw it together. Two more, extend, contract, open up, curl it in, good. Uncross your arms and your legs, grab your knees, rock side to side. And now rock forward and back, coming all the way onto your hands and knees. Take a nice big breath in cow pose, stretch your belly. Exhale, round for cat. Inhale, stretch the front of your body in cat. I mean, sorry, in cow. Exhale, stretch the back of your body in cat. Good. Inhale, come forward again for cow. But start to walk your hands all the way forward so your butt stays high, but now your forehead's going to come to rest on the floor or a block. Your heart's going to keep reaching for the floor. This is called puppy pose. So extend your puppy tail up to the ceiling as you reach your arms forward in this playful offering. Good. Take one more breath in. And then exhale. Press it up and back. Downward facing dog. Pedaling your knees. Shaking it out. On your next inhale, roll forwards to plank. As you exhale, lower your knees and lower to your belly. Rise up for cobra pose. And take it back. Downward facing dog. Good, inhale, sweep your right leg up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, step it between your hands. Spin your back heel down for warrior one. So back toes point to the front left corner of your mat. Raise your arms overhead, bend into your right knee. Square your hips to the front. Open your chest, sink your shoulders. Breathe in the fullness of God. Good. As you exhale, open it up, warrior two. So back toes point to the long edge of your mat. Arms extend forward and back. Take a breath in, reach your right arm up to the ceiling, tip it back, peaceful warrior. And as you exhale, bring it back, warrior two. Straighten your right leg, reach forward with your right hand and place your right hand on your shin or a block for triangle pose. Left arm reaches up to the ceiling. Absolutely beautiful. One more breath in here. Exhale, step your feet together at the front of your mat, forward fold. Press down into your feet, stand all the way up, arms overhead. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, sweep them back up. As you exhale, bring them to your heart. Sit back to chair pose. Bring your elbows out in front of you. Hug your right arm under your left arm. Wrap them up for eagle. If this is uncomfortable, you can grab the heads of your shoulders rather than pressing your arms and legs together. Lift your elbows to the height of your shoulders. Reach your hands away from your face. and your hips back a little farther as you breathe in. And as you exhale, untwist your arms. Fold it out. Good. Lift halfway up. Breathe in. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step your feet back to plank. This time, lower halfway down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Sweep your left foot up to the ceiling as you breathe in. And step it between your hands as you breathe out. Spin your back heel down. Rise up, warrior one. That's it. As you exhale, open out to warrior two. Beautiful. Tip it up and back, peaceful warrior. And bring it back, warrior two. Straighten your left knee. Reach forward with your left hand and lower your left hand for triangle. Can you reach away with your right fingers to find more length from fingertip to fingertip? Good, and then step forward for forward fold at the front of your mat. Root down through your feet. Rise up, big breath in. Exhale, hands to your heart. Again, sweep them overhead as you breathe in, and as you exhale, find chair pose. This time, wrap your left arm under your right for eagle arms. Can you send your gaze straight on so your forearms are right in the center of your vision and you can look side to side? Eagle vision, that's it. 
Untwist your arms, fold forward. Hands to the mat, step your feet back. Lower halfway down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Here we go. Let's add on to this just a little bit. Reach your right leg high, breathe in. Step it forward, breathe out. Warrior one, stand on up. Hips, hips square to the front of the mat. Interlace your fingers now behind your back. Reach your um, heels of your hands together as you draw your knuckles to the floor and open your chest. And then as you exhale, bow forward inside your right thigh for humble warrior. Good. Stand back up. Open up, warrior two. Tip it up and back, peaceful warrior. And then take it all the way forward for triangle. Straighten your right leg. Reach your left arm straight up. Take a breath here. And then as you breathe out, land in a forward fold. Root down, rise up, and sit right back into your chair pose. Full eagle this time. Right arm wraps under your left. Right arm wraps around your left. Hold it here. Squeezing your limbs together, using the compression of your limbs to grow a little taller and sit a little deeper. Good. Untwist your arms and your legs. Fold forwards. Hands to the mat. Step back to plank. Roll over to the outside edge of your right foot for side plank. Good, you can lower that left, that right knee if you need extra support. Otherwise, let's take this to wild things. So float your left foot up, step your left foot on the mat, hips point up to the ceiling, now reach them up high so you extend your left arm overhead. Beautiful, take it back to full plank, move through chaturanga, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here. Can you feel the breath, the spirit, the life in every cell in your being? Let's do this on the left side. Stretch your left leg high and step it forward. Stand up, warrior one. Draw your fingers together behind your back. Reach your knuckles towards the earth. Open your chest. And then as you breathe out, bow down, humble warrior. Good. Keep drawing that left hip back as you surrender your head below your heart. Now press your feet into the earth to stand back up and open up to warrior two. Tip it up and back, peaceful warrior. And as you come forward, find triangle pose, straightening your left leg and lowering your left hand down towards the floor. Open your right shoulder up a tad bit. That's it. And then meet in forward fold at the front of your mat. Root down, rise up, standing arms overhead. And as you exhale, sit back into your chair pose. Full eagle on the left side, so left leg wraps around your right, left arm wraps around your right. Squeeze your limbs together. Lift your elbows up a little higher and sit your hips back a little deeper. You've got it for one more breath in. Exhale, untwist, hands to the mat, step back to plank. Roll to the outside edge of your left foot, side plank. Stay here or drop your knee down for support or take it to wild thing. Float that right foot off, step it back behind you, lift your hips up to the ceiling, extend your right arm back. Big, expansive surrender to the fullness of who God is. Good, take it back to your full plank. Take it through chaturanga, upward facing dog, and downward facing dog. Amazing work. Drop your knees to the mat, child's pose. <sighs> John Philip Newell goes on to say that our deepest desire is for the love that is at the heart of life. It is a desire to see, to hear, to smell, to taste, and to touch the one whom we desire. And while the essence of God is beyond anything that can be seen or handled, creation is the expression of God. It is the divine embodiment that we may see and touch and love. Friends, it's an invitation to listen in a new way. Slowly rise back up to downward facing dog. And in the theme of birds and sea creatures, let's find pigeon pose. So stretch your right leg back and then lower your right shin down behind your wrists. Of course, if, if pigeon like this is not accessible for you, you can sit down and cross your ankle over your thigh for same kind of stretch. And once you've found your pigeon, you can begin to fold forwards, surrendering into the stretch.
adopting a willingness to listen, to experience, to meet in a new way. Slowly begin to press yourself up, gently making your way back to downward facing dog, moving through any kind of movement through your hips or legs that feels good, and then finding pigeon on the left side, laying your left shin down behind your wrists, or if you're seated upright, crossing your left ankle over your right thigh, offering your breath, your body, your thoughts, your heart up in this way. In the book of Revelation, the, the vision that John has includes these four creatures gathered around the throne of God. And these creatures have wings and they're covered in eyes and they represent the creatures of the earth and the sky and of the sea. And these creatures are saying over and over, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And it's a representation of how every creature here on earth and below the earth and above the earth and the sky is always giving glory to their creator. And they're giving glory to God by being simply who God has made them to be. Much of their praise, Newell writes, cannot be heard for it's expressed not in words but in being. In simply being, we give glory to our Creator. Slowly begin to press yourself all the way back up. And this time, instead of coming back to down dog, we're going to swing our right leg forward out in front and cross your left foot over your right thigh so your left foot is on the floor. And you can wrap your right arm around your left knee and take your left fingertips behind you for a seated spinal twist, inhaling to lengthen your spine up and exhaling to twist to the left. Again, inhaling to grow tall, exhaling to twist a bit deeper. Slowly come back to the center, stretch both legs out, and we'll take it on the other side. So bring your right foot in and cross it over your left leg. Wrap your left arm around your knee, send your right hand behind you. Sit up tall, breathe in. As you exhale, twist deep. One more time like this. That's it, and then untwist back to the center. Slowly lie down on your mat, and before we find Shavasana, we're going to find a pose called fish pose, which is a really beautiful heart opener. So um, bring the palms of your hands right underneath your butt. Good. And we're going to come to sit up on our forearms, using that as our foundation and lifting our chest up. So start to point your toes, reaching them forward, and then start to lift your chest up off the mat, letting your shoulders roll down your spine, your heart to open, and your arms to press into the floor for support as you open your throat. Let your heart, let your voice, let your thoughts give praise. To the God who makes creatures who were made to worship him, who were made for such a time as this, who were create, given a perfectly created landscape for them to thrive in. That's you, my friend. 
One more big breath in. And then exhale, slowly release it, lowering all the way down onto the mat and settling in for Shavasana. For our Shavasana today, I want to read you a poem from Mary Oliver from her book of poetry called American Primitive. Uh, and if you love poetry and you've really been digging this creation series, I cannot recommend this book enough. Um, just her reflections on creation are stunning. And so this poem is called Humpbacks, Per the Whale. And just receive it. Let your mind go with the description of the words. Let the Holy Spirit guide your imagination. And just receive. There is all around us this country of original fire. You know what I mean. The sky, after all, stops at nothing, so something has to be holding our bodies in its rich and timeless stables, or else we would fly away. Off Stellwagen, off the Cape, the humpbacks rise. Carrying their tonnage of barnacles and joy, they leap through the water, they nuzzle back under it like children at play. They sing, too, and not for any reason you can't imagine. Three of them rise to the surface near the bow of the boat, then dive deeply, their huge scarred flukes tipped to the air. We wait, not knowing just where it will happen, and suddenly they smash through the surface. Someone begins shouting for joy and you realize it is yourself as they surge upward and you see for the first time how huge they are as they breach and dive and breach again through the shining blue flowers of the split water and you see them for some unbelievable part of a moment against the sky like nothing you've ever imagined, like the myth of the fifth morning galloping out of darkness, pouring heavenward, spinning. Then they crash back under those black silks and we all fall back together into that wet fire. You know what I mean. I know a captain who has seen them playing with seaweed, swimming through the green islands, tossing the slippery branches into the air. I know a whale that will come to the boat whenever she can and nudge it gently along the bow with her long flipper. I know several lives worth living. Listen, whatever it is you try to do with your life, nothing will ever dazzle you like the dreams of your body. It's spirit longing to fly while the dead weight bones toss their dark mane and hurry back into the fields of glittering fire where everything, even the great whale, throbs with song. God, may we live up to our created potential as full worshipers of you. May our lives throb with song. May every sense of ours be swept up in love, in gratitude, in reverence to who you are. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Slowly begin to deepen your breath and make your way up to a comfortable seated position. Our practice will end here. And thank you, my friend, for meeting me on your mat again. Thank you for practicing with me today, friend. I really hope you've enjoyed this series so far and that today's practice really spoke to you in a new way. Um, if you'd like to join our community, we would so love to have you. Come read more about us, see the kind of content you get each month by being part of our community on our website, theyogaabby.com. You are absolutely welcome, no matter how much yoga experience you have or don't have, how much church experience you have or don't have, none of that matters. Just come and join our community and meet with Jesus on your yoga mat. So thanks again for joining me and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for day six of our Creation Week series.